Hi folks, today I'm gonna to dive into a little bit of the design buildup and the thermal design of our cabin before we start framing out this whole structure in the next day or two. Joe and I are ready to jump on the tools, but there's a few things that I thought I'll answer in this video because they're bound to come up in the next one if I don't say them now. First up, how did I design it to start with? Because we changed a lot over the last six months. We designed this six months ago on our sofa at the old house, um, but times changed, opinions change, and just our design of the house has changed. So, first of all, we decided we were gonna go with a seal or a timber frame structure. We looked at SIPs. I decided not to go that route. One, it doesn't make for very good viewing because <laughs> we would have it up in a day. It might make sense as far as time, but we've got a bit of time and we've got the ability to share the process with you. So we thought we may as well build it ourselves rather than get a kit done elsewhere. We priced it all up anyway. Uh, and it was about 50% more um, as far as materials go. So it, it, this is gonna save us. The structure itself would have been CLS, either 100 mil or, or 89 mil once it's planed down. Uh, 89 mil CLS or 140, which is a bit deeper. now. The reason why I wanted to stick away from the 140, which is what's used in a typical timber frame structure house for self-build, um, is we are really quite limited on space internally and you know, it all adds up. If we take this much off every single wall, you know, all the space counts. So where possible, I want to insulate outside of the frame to make maximize our inside. So 89 mil CLS was the way I went. But that's not the end of it because there's loads of options still at that point. We could just build a normal stud wall, insulate between them. Uh, that would be okay. And that's kind of the done way for a lot of, the done thing for a lot of structures. However, it wouldn't really give us the thermal properties we want. We don't want to be heating this place too much. And we also don't want it overcooking in the summer. So insulating between is not quite enough. Therefore, we can either choose to insulate internally, which is what we did on the garage conversion, quite good in a retrofit solution. So put 25 mil or 50 mil insulation on the inside, or we can put the exact same insulation on the outside and externally insulate the frame. That's good because it means all the wood, all the timber is all on the warm side, and we end up with a kind of seamless, continuous, um, cozy layer all around the outside. Both of those methods involve PIR and having that foam insulation either inside or outside. And just both a change of heart and just a change of direction in how we want to play out the buildings and every, all our other projects in the future, we want to switch to more natural insulations where possible. So therefore, this is the new method. So this is what we've decided. We're still going to go with 89mm CLS. Doesn't need to be treated. It's all completely internal, really. We're going to build our walls and typically you're going to put OSB on the outside to stop it from racking, give it its strength. And if we're going to put that sheathing board on there, we can do that lying flat and then raise it as one unit. Change of plan now is actually we're going to put our OSB layer on the inside. Exact same properties, it's still going to give us the strength, but it means that we can put the OSB layer on the inside all the way around. That basically acts as an air tightness layer as well. And then we'll counterbatten that for our service cavity before our plasterboard. And then on the outside, we are going to use another board. We're going to use a wood fiber board and that has some thermal properties to it. So a little bit like going with the foam insulation, which was, you know, Mark one design that will keep our timbers nice and warm. It's only going to be 25 to 35 mil thick and they're kind of tongue and groove boards and they will sheath the outside will then fulfill our stud work with a wool insulation, either a mineral wool slab or maybe even sheep's wool if we can get a hold of it at a good price and enough of it. So that gives us 90 millimeters of insulation within the joist and about 30 mil of wood fiber insulation on the outside. That's no way near what we would want to achieve in a primary dwelling, you know, our long-term house that we're going to build. But for this, I think it's a good balance of a nice breathable wall that can constantly dry itself out if it ever needs to. No risk of condensation in the wall and it's all nice and natural. It also means that we have kept it to a bare minimum, our wall uh, width, 
because we're putting most of our insulation or some of the insulation on the outside of it. If we'd gone with SIPs, remember, we would end up with OSB on the inside and outside. We would still have to put a membrane batten and then cladding. And on the inside, we still have to put batten and then plasterboard if we wanted a service cavity, otherwise you're just digging into the OSB. So there was no, no width benefit on SIPs either. And I think I'd rather go natural where possible. Also cost-wise, the soft insulations, the wool insulations, even the wood fiber boards are gonna be cheaper than going with a PIR. That said, we will be using PIR in some situations in the roof where we've got pitch ceilings because it's unavoidable. And it's, at the end of the day, it's great as far as thermal qualities, um, but as far as the, the walls, it makes sense to use what we can and build it all on site ourselves. So I hope that gives a bit of a short, brief background to how it's gonna work as far as the construction methods. Now, unfortunately, we cannot build them. If you buy your timber frame kit, uh, or timber frame supplier um, design elsewhere. It's gonna be made in a factory, similar system. There's a lot of systems, breathable, um, closed wall systems like ours. They'll all be completely built, membrane to internal surface, in units, delivered, craned in or lifted in. I built it up in my head that we could achieve something similar, build them in the barn or even build them flat here. Unfortunately, we want to get building. Joe's getting impatient, I'm getting impatient. We could try and do that, um, but we're still a week or two off getting hold of the wood fibre board. And because we put our OSB layer on the inside now, not on the outside, it's not like we can build it like a typical stud wall OSB, then stand it all up. Uh, and then we'd have to membrane it anyway to keep it nice and weather tight. So what we're gonna do is just stand it as a skeleton frame, stud wall frame, it's easy enough, it's only single story. We can just sit panels up against it, nail them all in. We'll put the OSB layer on the inside. We're gonna insulate between wood fiber on the outside or vice versa, we'll work from out to in. All of those, apart from the insulation between the studs, both the OSB, which is an OSB three, and all the wood fiber boards are both weatherproof within reason. Um, but as soon as that mineral wool or the uh, wool insulation's in there, the membrane's going to be 2.7 meters, so that drops all the way down, completely conceals that. But of course, the roof will be on as well. Membrane on that will be weather tight. It'll be okay. And it's summer, which doesn't help at all because it could rain at any point. But anyway, hopefully that gives you a background to it. It's all trial and error. This is all just a training ground, a test ground for the main house. Because if we, if we go this route in the main house, we want to be hitting like 0 0.1 on U value. So it'll be four times as thick but it could be the same principle or it could be a double stud with insulation between there's lots of different options but it means that we can kind of get a feel for the materials the wood fiber board do we like it soft insulations do we want to stick with that do we want to try and push to use sheep's wool warm cell all the recycled insulations um, and then even service cavities do we think 25 mil battens uh, on the inside of the osb is that going to give us enough for pipe work, probably not, but it, for cabling, is that sufficient for all the boxes and, and things like that? Do we want to counter batten the ceiling as well? So there's a whole range of questions that hopefully we're going to answer here that doesn't cost us any money. We, a few mistakes here and there is all it's all about. And then we can translate that into a five, six times bigger project in the future and at least have a flavor, a little taste of, uh, of what we're doing. There we go. Any questions, sit them down below. Is that my lunch? Yeah, well, you can have some more, but what is it? this is like a uh, tomato salad -y. Tomato salad, nice and healthy. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.